Hey everybody. So we just got done with the Saturday Q&A and as we were going through a lot of those questions, I noticed there are a lot of traders that are inconsistent, as many of us know, right? As many of us know, there are like 90% to 98% of traders that fail to trade consistently day in and day out. And I apologize for the background noise. We're here hanging out in the backyard, me and the kids and the wife, we're smoking some barbecue and uh, just hanging out for the weekend, spending some time together, which is what a lot of you should be doing with your families every single opportunity that you get. Because once this pandemic's over and life goes back to normal, you're going to wish you had this time to spend with them again. But if you're by yourself and you don't have people to spend time with just based on your circumstances, and so you're forced to just sit there with your thoughts, and this time's tough on that. But what you should be focusing on is um, your trading and practicing and mastering a skill that you now have the time to become extremely good at in a very short period of time because you have a lot of time available to yourself and if you are an essential worker that is still every day having to go out there in the world god bless you um, and i hope you're being safe in all of this and if you are not an essential worker i pray for each of you every night that you stay safe and that your uh, financial situation improves and that we all get through this together. But I want to talk about a topic about consistency and inconsistency. And there was a member that posted this list from Mark Douglas, the author, and it says, I'm a consistent trader because, and there's a list that Mark Douglas writes for himself. But I think a lot of you should make a list for yourself that you should actually make a list of the reasons why you're consistent. And if you are not consistent, you should make a, a list of reasons why you are not. So I want to share with you guys 11 things, okay? Six of which are going to be why I am a consistent trader. Five after that are going to be lists. They're going to be reasons, and I wrote this list back during my first year of trading and I pulled it up out of my hard drive off of like my little portable hard drive that I used to keep and I want to share this list with you guys and I also want to share a list of consistent re of reasons why I'm consistent now and you'll see the difference between the two so number one the reason why I am a consistent trader now is I only enter at my lines that I predetermine before I'm ever in the trade. I predetermine my entries with a rational mind before I make a decision on an emotional mind. Second, I predefine my max loss every time. I predefine my loss before I ever enter a trade. Number three, I walk away. I walk away. If I feel myself trying to take a random trade that was not from my watch list. So if at the open, all of a sudden I start seeing a bunch of price action happen, I start getting FOMO that maybe my line is not going to touch. Maybe this is actually going to be the trade. Maybe this is actually going to be how it plays out. Maybe this is going to be how it plays out. Maybe it, maybe it doesn't play out this way and it actually plays out this way. And maybe I need to jump in right now and maybe I need to try to get a, and I just start freaking out. I do this still. I still do this. But I made this list for myself based on what that member shared and I thought it was a good idea that I needed to write these things down. I knew it in my heart. Like I knew it that these are the things that I need to do every single day. But I have to write a list. I have to write a list because I am weak just like everyone else to my own vices and to my own emotions. Number four. I take the money that the market gives me without letting greed affect my decision making. Okay. If the market gives me a hundred bucks and it's at one of my levels that I think I need to exit a piece, I'm going to take the money. I'm not going to think about, wow, it got there really fast. Maybe it could go so much further. No, the market just paid me 
do I accept the payment or do I wait for more? The answer is you accept the payment every time. You accept the payment. Take the money. Take the money. Every time, take the money. Number five, I'm willing to admit defeat and not allow myself to revenge trade. I'm willing to admit that I am wrong, that my lines were wrong, and not try to go find new lines that may or may not be right. Because now we're back to that point. We're back to that point of I'm making decisions in an emotional state. I just took a loss. Now I'm changing my plan. I'm changing my plan after I took it a loss because now I'm emotional about the trade. My previous plans that I write out in my watch lists are rational ideas because I have not seen the price action yet. They're rational ideas. They're not emotional ideas. So I know my rational plans work 90% of the time. Nine out of 10 of them work. So I know I need to only trade my rational ideas and not my emotional ideas after I take a loss or when the trade is not going to touch my level and I change my plan and adjust from there. Now my plan is not working. Now I've got to do something else. Some traders can do this. I cannot. Some traders have that ability. Some traders have the ability to just walk into a trade, read the tape, and understand which of these five different things could they do, and they pick it, and they do it, and that's why they are who they are. We are all different traders. We all have to trade our own way. I apologize if you hear wind in the background. I don't know if it's coming through on the microphone. Um, I will try to edit that out if it is. But um, number six, number six, is the most important one to me. I don't need to trade today. I don't need to make a trade. If none of my lines touch, I don't need to trade. There you, you hear my notifications going off. I don't need to trade. I don't need to. I don't need to. So those are the reasons, many of which, why I am a consistent trader. I will add one more to this. I will add one more to this. I pay myself the profits that I make in my account, okay? I wire out when I make a profit. I rebalance my account every single month. I don't trade with a large account. I don't need to trade with a large account because the larger my account grows, the bigger my losses grow. And I don't really do well with that. <laughs> so I just keep my account small. I trade a smaller account for a reason because it prevents me from letting myself get out of control. The more money I see in my account, the more I allow myself to take additional risk. And so it's my own handcuffs. It's my own handcuffs to my chair. It's my own prevention plan. Okay. So that's number seven. I'll just add that one in there. That just that came to me and that was after this weekend Q&A that a, a member asked that question uh, or he said that uh, he was only going to take one trade every day or something like that and I think it's a great idea. And I added to that and I said that you need to also pay yourself. You need to pay yourself and take money out of your account, rebalance your account every single month because just because you made, let's say you make you know, 10 grand this month. And now your $30,000, let's not even say that. Now let's say your $10,000 account is $20,000, okay? Or 25 is now, or 30 is now 40 or whatever the hell it is. You, in your head, you're going to go, I got more money. I can make more by taking on more risk. But also what that means is you can end up where you came from real quick. You can get back to where you came from real quick if you don't wire it out and pay yourself. We're here to pay ourselves. We're not here to make a million in a day. We're here to make a million over a period of time. We're here to make millions over periods of time. But we're not here to make it all today, make it all this month. We're here to make it over time. We're here to grow, okay? Now, let's talk about why you're probably an inconsistent trader, okay? Your reasons are probably gonna be very similar to mine. Uh, this is a list I made for myself a long time ago, back in my first year of trading. I've been trading now 
<clears throat> next month is six years. So number one, I always let my losers double or triple in size compared to the size of my wins. I always held on too long to that loss. I always held on, hoping that it would return to where I entered, just begging for break-even, okay? Begging for break-even, and a lot of this stemmed from other things, and I'll get to that in number two. Number two, I was holding on to those bad trades after I entered because I did not want to sacrifice a day trade, okay? I traded under PDT. If you don't trade under PDT or never have, I hate to say this, and I'm just going to be realistic with you, you're not going to be able to relate to this situation because you don't know the struggles mentally that a PD tra PDT trader goes through, okay? A lot of you are going to be, oh, that's stupid. Oh, that's silly. Why would, why would you just hold on to it? Why would you hold on to it? Why wouldn't you just cut it? You can get back in. As a PD tra PDT trader, you may not have another day trade. You may not have the ability to get back in. Or if you're on your last leg, you may get in, and what you do is you then take a day trade idea, and this is number three, you take a day trade and turn it into a swing trade just because you can't, you can't get out. Because if you do, you're restricted for 90 days. So you take a day trade idea and turn it into a swing trade idea, which never works, never works, trust me. <laughs> Sorry, that's the first F-bomb, I think, in this entire video. I've tried to keep that out of there, but that's just, I'm a real person, so... And that's me is my that's my personality, okay? So it's you can't relate if you've never traded under PDT. You won't relate to this. You may relate to some of these other situations, but you won't relate. You won't understand because you will think, well, just cut your loss. Why would you not just cut your loss? Take the, just get back into the trade. Sometimes you can't. You can't get back in the trade as much as you wish you could. As much as you wish you could. I just opened a can of worms with the first F-bomb, so sorry. Um, yeah, you just can't. You can't. And it's hard to explain to somebody that's never traded under PDT. You have no idea this mental mind f that trading under PDT is. It's hard. It is hard. And people are going to say, well, just trade under PDT. Don't think about it. Don't let that affect your trades. Don't let it. Of course, of course, because one, you probably never traded under PDT. Two, if PDT was a, not a thing when you started trading and now it is a thing, now that you're miles and miles more successful than, the re, than, than other traders and you have accounts that don't, you know, that's easy. You know, we all look up to that person or those people. We all look up to those traders to teach us when we were inconsistent, how to become consistent. Unfortunately, it's psychological. It's in your mind. It's in your mind. The battle is in here, okay? The battle is up here. What people that don't trade under PDT tell you is cut the loss, right? You can always re-enter, cut the loss. You can always re-enter, but if you can't re-enter, number one, cut the loss. Get out, just get out, move on, move on. Move on, live to trade another day, okay? Number four, okay? I was always, always hunting for the bigger wins. I was hunting for the bigger wins. I was refusing to take the money that the market gave me because I felt it was not enough. It was not enough money that I felt I needed to make more 20 bucks. I felt that it was worth 40. I thought I could at least get 50 out of this. A hundred dollars? That's a decent amount of money. That's a decent amount of money. Man, what, what if I made 20 cents on 500 shares? What if it goes a dollar and I can make 500 bucks? That's a decent size win. A few $500 wins, you know, and that's an extra five grand. You know, I just need to do that 10 times. And, you know, if I've got a 10 grand account, you know, that's 15 grand. And then if I just keep doing that, I mean, yeah, that could really add up pretty quick. Oh, it's going against me now. Oh. And that's how it goes. That's how the trade goes. Take the money that the market gives you. Accept the payment. Accept the payment. Okay? Number five. And this is the last one, and then that's it. I was trying to trade everything. Short, long, both sides. Tried to trade it all. Boxing. Tried that. I was actually pretty decent at that. <laughs> but it was very hard to do with a small amount of capital. So you had to, it was, it was tough. But... Um, 
if you don't have a big account, that's actually pretty hard to do. Um, and so I discovered that I did not have enough capital in the beginning to do that, so I just left it alone. Um, I tried to trade everything. I tried every strategy. And I didn't just try them once and then, or like for a little while. And then if I didn't understand it, um, I didn't leave it. What I did was I went on to learn something else. And when I went on to learn something else, I then started looking for that setup and the other setup prior to that, right? The one that I, that I sucked at. That one, I still kept looking for it because I was like, I learned it. I need to make it work. I need to make this trade work. I know what it's supposed to do. I need to make it work. Guess what, folks? There's trades that I understand that just never <laughs> work for me. They never work for me. No matter what I try to do, I just can't make it work. Like the first bounce, for example. I just can't make that trade work. No matter how well I understand it, no matter how well I could explain it to somebody else, how to do it, I can't make it work because it's just not me as a trader. It does not work for my mind, okay? It just doesn't work for me, doesn't work for me. And so I refused to trade just one thing, okay? And I tried to trade everything. I tried to trade this, I tried to trade that, and it would fail, and then I would go back and try to do this and try to do that, and then I would try to bring that old trade back into it. Maybe that's a setup I see now. Oh, I see it now. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> nope, fails again. Oh! Oh, the struggles that you go through as an inconsistent trader is just, oh, it's damaging, mentally damaging. So I hope you guys can take something from this. I hope you guys are being safe. I hope you guys are enjoying your time with your friends, with your family, anybody that you can be around. And if you can't be around anybody, then do something like this. Get on FaceTime, get on Skype, do a Google meeting. I did a Google Hangout in the room the other day. Everybody had a good time doing that. We're gonna, I'm going to try to do some more of those, you know, but at the end of the day, I can't devote all my time to you guys. <laughs> I got a wife and kids that I got to <laughs> that I got to give some attention to as well. So, but just know I love you guys. I hope you're being safe out there and I hope you enjoy this and have a good one. Thank you. <laughs>